night, which we're really excited about as we get to honor the latest inductees into the LGBT Journalists Hall of Fame. And tonight, you're going to be hearing the stories of three remarkable people who helped blaze a trail for everyone in this room and, and untold millions of people outside this room. And to tell you about our first inductee this year, uh, it's an honor to bring up a lifetime, another lifetime member of our organization, a former NLGJA Vice President for Prince and New Media and a very good friend of both of ours. From Recode, please welcome Nina Freed. I'm greatly honored to be here tonight to help induct Donna Cartwright into the LGBT Hall of Fame. Like many of those she joins, Donna is both an accomplished journalist in her own right and a trailblazer for those who have followed in her footsteps. Donna spent nearly three decades as a copy editor at the New York Times. After 20 of those years, she transitioned from male to female. In doing so, Donna set the precedent that it is possible for transgender journalists to be a part of even the biggest of newsrooms. With little model to go on, she literally wrote the book on how to do what she did. Her transition served as a model for the dozens of us who have followed in her footsteps, and she's been a trusted friend and advisor to many of us. In addition to her work to help improve the words that went into the Times, Donna was active in union activities, working to improve labor conditions for all journalists, especially and including LGBT journalists. In the decades since her transition, she also helped shape coverage of LGBT issues, both as a voice within the Times newsroom and in recent years through her work in various groups, including Pride at Work, where she serves on the board. Donna was also an early voice within an LGBTA, teaching all of us the organization and as individuals, that transgender journalists do exist and that the organization was not yet doing enough to make us feel welcome and a part of this organization. She had the bravery to continue attending NLGJA conventions at a time when there were few other transgender faces and our presence was quite frankly not as welcome as it is today. It was at the convention in 2000 that I was lucky enough to meet Donna. It was a really tough time for me. That first convention that I went to was not a positive experience. I experienced hostility, I felt alone, I thought this was the one place I would feel at home, and I felt like I was in another group, it was not my organization. And the one thing that kept me coming back a few years later was the fact that NLGJ was the place where I met Donna. I will be forever grateful to Donna for her leadership, mentorship, and friendship. Please join me in celebrating Donna's career and honoring her as the first transgender journalist in the LGBT Hall of Fame. I'm deeply grateful to be named to NLGJA's Hall of Fame. I regret that a prior commitment prevents me from attending your convention, but I wanted to share a few thoughts. It's been a long road since the mid-1990s when I began to think seriously about coming out as transgender in a world that was much less welcoming to trans people than we've become used to seeing. I had no idea what impact this decision would have on my career at the New York Times, where I'd been employed as a copy editor for nearly 20 years. No one had come out as transgender in the times before me, and predecessors in mainstream journalism were few and obscure. Coverage of trans people in the times up till then was scant and often disrespectful, but I braced myself and went ahead and found that when put to the test, my colleagues rose and, as one put it, to the best in themselves, and their support was invaluable. 
I still remember being moved nearly to tears when I returned to my desk after posting the open letter to my colleagues in that spring of 1998 and found my inbox overflowing with supportive messages. I encountered almost no hostility as an out trans woman, and in fact, the most difficult workplace challenge associated with my transition was getting my colleagues to adjust their pronoun use. As a result, I think of the fact that I had been already known as, as, as for 21 years when I came out. I was strengthened by the ties I had built earlier in the 1990s with my gay and lesbian colleagues at the Times, supporting their struggle for domestic partner benefits and for respect and dignity. I continued working for the Times until retirement in 2006. Trans people in the media have come a long way since, although not without bumps and setbacks, such as the tragic death of NLGJ member Christine Daniels of the LA Times. That has been one of the reasons I have continued to work on transgender issues from the moment I came out and continue to do so today. I was a founding member of the New York Association for Gender Rights Advocacy, the Gender Rights Advocacy Association of New Jersey, and the founding member of the National Center for Transgender Equality. During my last few years at the Times and after retirement, I combined my passions for LGBT advocacy and labor union activism by becoming the first trans member of the executive board of Pride at Work and the first transgender co-president in 2009 to 2012. Again, thank you for this great honor. On behalf of Donna, thank you so much for recognizing her.